Well, hey there, guys, and welcome back. On this week's show, it's part six of our Toys and Joys dump truck and pup trailer build. Well, the build is coming along really well, but we're starting to get into some processes that are nothing more than repeats of things we've done in earlier builds. So I'm going to try to push that along a little more, not give a full explanation of those pieces unless there is something different because there's no need to explain them a second time. The processes are exactly the same. Sometimes it's just different dimensions. So with that being said, let's get started on this week's episode. So we can now install our drop down axle assembly into our frame. So the first thing you want to do is from the right hand side of our frame, right from the edge of our drop down axle assembly bracket, you want to place a mark back here on the axle, one and seven sixteenths of an inch back from the edge of this bracket. Now guys, this is the way this bracket assembly goes. I don't know if I'm showing this clearly, but unless you are some kind of crazy woodworking guru, you are going to have to spend some time to do a little bit of filing, maybe a little bit of sanding, just to tweak this a bit to get it to fit properly. Truth be told, I just spent an hour filing this thing gently so I didn't change its shape too much. And you remember those 532nd axle pins, the two extra ones that we made? And I said, well, you know, I'm just making extra in case they screw up. Well, they didn't screw up, which means that I was able to shape them to be the axle pins that fit for this assembly. So we're just going to put these pins in and there is our drop down assembly. Now we have our lockdown pin holder and that is where that line comes in place uh, at one and seven sixteenths behind your drop down bracket because we're going to apply a little bit of glue and this pin holder is going to get glued to our frame right at that line and flush with the bottom of our frame. You want to make sure that this assembly is pushed up inside of your frame. Otherwise, you're going to have problems. All right, so we're going to get this aligned, put in place, clean up the squeeze out, and then I'll show you what to do next. Well, at this point, if you're happy with the way that your drop down axle is functioning, you can install the drop down lock pin. Now, you just lift this up, your pin pushes in locks your axle in place so that it cannot come down any further. But guys, what concerns me is that there's nothing here to stop this pin from coming out and being lost. So although the plans don't call for it, I've checked on them and there's nothing that gets glued in this area right here. So what I've done is I've cut a very small piece of walnut with the pin fully retracted. I'm going to glue this down at the bottom, just in behind our lock pin so that it cannot come out any further. And that way the pin does not get lost. While we're at it now, guys, we can also glue in these axle pins to lock our assembly in place. Do not put any glue on the pins. My suggestion is I would back the pin off a little bit, put a little dab of glue in behind the head of the pin and then push it down to glue it to the outside of the frame. The rest can free float and it will be just fine. Well, we're going to hold off on the assembly for now. Putting things like the mud flaps or the mud flap frames or that sort of thing, the dump box, pivot blocks, any of that stuff, putting that on the frame at this point is just gonna ask to get them broken because they're quite fragile and there's still a lot of manhandling that has to be done of this frame. So I'm going to turn my attention now to the air tank mounts. But guys, there's a bit of an issue here. Look at how thick this mount is, but yet it says it's 3 16 That's not what I'm seeing. I'm seeing this as 3 8 However, 3 eighths is so, so unproportionate to the build because the grooves 
that we made in our air tank are 3 16 of an inch wide. So regardless of what this drawing here says, I will be making these at a 3 16 of an inch stock. It's not a difficult piece. I'm going to cut it till its final width and its length, and then I'll use a 3 8 circle template to give me this little radius right here. I'm just gonna cut that at the scroll saw or even on the oscillating drum sander would be just fine. And then we're gonna glue it in place. Okay, so we're just going to show you this because I've never seen a drawing on a Toys and Joys plan be this far out of whack. This is what it shows on the drawing. This is the actual size of the piece. It's like this drawing has been uh, doubled in size on the print. This says one inch. This is actually two inches, but this is one inch. Um, this says three sixteenths, but this is actually three eighths. Same here, this says three sixteenths, but this is actually three eighths. The whole drawing is out of whack. It looks like the measurements here are 100% correct. So don't get confused by this. Go by these measurements, not by the actual size here. Well, in order to get the measurements for where to put these brackets, you're gonna have to scale off of drawing one in this case, the cover page. And from the edge of our fuel tank brackets back towards the rear of the vehicle, you want to place a line at one and one eighth. And that is the starting edge of our bracket. It will also be one quarter of an inch down from the top of our frame, just like that. I just use a little quarter inch spacer to mark it out. So I'm going to place a line there at a quarter inch down. I'm just going to glue in one for now and let that one set up. Once it gets set up, I will take my tank and I will use the tank to guide me in where to put the second one as far as the distance from front to back. I'll still line it up at the quarter inch down from the top of the frame, but um, I'll glue that all together, like I said, using the air tank as kind of a spacer. Well, my preference on these builds is to go page by page, but this particular set of plans is not conducive to do that. It's kind of all over the place. So we're going to move over to page eight and we are going to make this entire rear axle assembly. And the first pieces we're gonna cut is the rear axles. We've seen this before. It is a simple rip cut, half inch by half inch stock. We're gonna cut them to their final length of two and three quarter. And then we're going to drill our stopped holes, three quarters of an inch deep into our axles. Now you know that because it's not a through hole for our axle, for my liking, I use a quarter inch hole, not the 5 16 that they've listed here. The one big difference that you'll notice, guys, is that there is not a round over on each one of the edges. I now want to make the four rear axle spacers. Honestly, I don't think we need a video on this. We have done these spacers before for the front axles and for the drop down axle. The only difference between the two is that one was an eighth of an inch thick and these ones are half an inch thick. I intend to use the exact same process. So if you're not sure of the process, you can always refer back to the earlier parts of this series. Same thing goes with this drive shaft mount. I intend to do the exact same process for this. It's just a smaller turning as well as this drive shaft connector. Where the difference is going to be here is when we make this drive shaft differential. And for that, I'm going to get a piece of material and I'm going to chuck it up in the lathe. Well, we can see here on page eight that we have this drive shaft differential. And right in the middle of the differential, you can see it here on the assembly drawing, right in the middle there is this differential cap. I don't want to do it in two separate pieces. So I'm gonna do it all in one at the lathe. And for that reason, I have a scrap of walnut here uh, chucked up into the headstock of my lathe. It's about one and three quarters by one and three quarters, but I only need the end of it. It's just a scrap. So I'm going to turn this to round, first of all, being sure not to get too close to my turning chuck.
And while we're nowhere close to our final dimension, I'm just gonna square off the end of our turning here um, so that we have a square section from our side profile to our end profile. And if we look on the drawing, we can see that our differential cap is a half an inch in diameter. So the very first thing I'm gonna do now that I have this flattened off is I'm gonna cut in until I have a nub on the end that's a half an inch in diameter. And now the outer dimension of our differential is one inch. So I'm gonna turn down the rest of this here to one inch in diameter. And then our last step will be to do the round over right here. I believe it's a 3 16 radius. Um, we'll just do that, just eyeball it, guys. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then lastly, our differential cap is actually only a sixteenth of an inch thick. So I'm going to take this down to get a little closer to our one sixteenth, and then we'll give this thing a good sanding. And the last thing we're going to do is measure its thickness, and we're going to use a parting tool and cut it off. Well, truth be told, while making our rear axle spacers, I kind of messed up, and I ruined four of them by turning them too small. So I just turned them down to a one inch because they're usable for these drive shaft differential top and bottoms where we need four of them. All you need to do is place a ruler across the top. We can see it shows the flat section at seven eighths of an inch. So just move your ruler up until it measures seven eighths of an inch from edge to edge and then draw a line. And I'm just gonna take this over to the scroll saw and I'm gonna cut this off just below that line. And then we're gonna use our sandpaper and MDF block to sand it flat. I now want to make the rear springs. So I have cut some stock um, that is the main size or the final dimension here of our springs, which is four and a quarter by three quarters by a quarter of an inch thick. Now here on the drawing, it shows seven routered grooves at 1 32nd of an inch. Again, I don't have a 1 32nd straight router bit. I have a 1 16th. So I've kind of scribbled it out here and I've done the calculations and essentially it's a 3 64 gap and then a 1 16th routing and then a 3 64th gap and a 1 16th router. So what I've done is I've drawn out these lines on a piece of maple. This will basically be my setup block. And what I'm going to do is take this over to the router table. And just like we did on the first one, we're gonna make one pass, rotate it 90 degrees and make another pass. Then readjust after we get both sides of both pieces done. And then just carry on till we meet in the middle and hopefully it's all gonna work out. So let's get this routed and I'll show you what you end up with when we're done this. Well, I don't know how I managed it with my calculations, but somehow I managed to get them all evenly spaced and looking fantastic. But there's only six grooves here, not seven like what it shows on the plans. Um, now, guys, I've always said that if you're not happy with a piece of any model or any project, I always say this on the show, remake it. It's as simple as that. But what if you like your screw up? And that's the case here. I really like the end result. Even though there's one less uh, routing here, it looks great. It's even, it looks great from the end. It looks great from both sides. I don't see any reason to remake it. So there you go. When you're good, you're good. <laughs> okay, guys, so we're gonna mark out the 3 16th of an inch down here at the bottom, as well as our one and three eighths up here at the top. We're gonna mark that angle, and just like we did on the other piece, I'm gonna sand it and finish this piece off. Well, our rear axle brackets could not be simpler. It's a couple pieces of quarter inch by quarter inch stock. They are four and a quarter inches long, and we have a 45 degree chamfer on either side. Simple table saw work, guys. We've done a kajillion of these already um, in this build. 
But the next pieces that we want to make are going to be these rear spring mounts. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take some stock. If you look here, there is no vertical measurement here, but it's three quarters of an inch. So we're gonna take some three eighth of an inch stock, square off the one end, and then place a quarter inch by a quarter inch rabbit in the one end. From there, guys, we're going to cut it off at three quarters of an inch and then cut it into one inch wide pieces and you end up with something that looks just like these. It's a simple process at this point, guys. We're going to mark the bottom five eighths that should be left as well as the distance up to the top, which is a half an inch. Mark that angle, sand it. We're gonna mark our hole, which is centered on our entire piece and a quarter of an inch up from the bottom. This is a 3 16 hole. We're gonna get it drilled. And once you get all of that finished, you end up with a piece that looks just like this. Well, we're now gonna start putting this rear spring assembly together. And we need to make two of these. So we have one of our rear springs, we have one of our rear axle brackets, and with our 45 chamfers on the bottom and the taper pointing to the top, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our piece that we just made and sit it in here like this. Now, in order to get it spaced in between, we need to have one and five eighths worth of setup blocks. So we're just gonna place our square up against here like this, smoosh the whole thing together. Yes, smoosh is a technical term. Hold it together like that. And when we're done, if we did everything correctly, you'll have this sort of setup. So we're gonna glue two of these together and let them set up. While we're waiting for those to dry, we can glue our spacers into our axles and we'll bring back our friend the brass pin or the drill bit or whatever it is that you use. We're gonna glue all four of our spacers onto the ends of our axles. You know, I said to glue all of these spacers in, but I've changed my mind. I've actually stopped with this one because I think it would be much easier at this point to glue in place the drive shaft differential top and bottoms because then if there's any uh, discrepancies here in thickness, we can sand them easily. So I'm just using a square and some setup blocks to get these centered and we're just gonna sandwich it just like this and uh, glue these in place. And then once you get those sanded after they're dried, then you can glue the spacers in place. Well, at this point, you can pick one of your axles. It doesn't matter which one. And in the middle here, over your differential top and bottom, we're going to put our differential uh, or our drive shaft differential and the one piece cap. If you decided to do it in separate pieces, that's fine. Just glue them centered on the back of one of your axles. Just pick one. Well, truth be told, I wish I would have done these side pieces in a little bit of a different order, but that's all part of the learning curve. Um, because these are already together on the sides, it kind of makes it a little awkward to try to get them glued in here to, uh, or to get our axles glued into this whole assembly. It's a little bit of a tight fit. We need to glue these together now, and the important part is the spacing. So what you need to do is just make sure that you have an eighth of an inch gap between your spacer and your spring, um, but that gap is not as important as what this gap is here in the middle, which is a two inch gap, because this is going to slide over top of the framework uh, of, of our truck. So you need that space in here for that framework. I would suggest putting a 3 16 inch dowel through these holes to keep this kind of aligned. That's up to you if you want to do that. Be sure to use some straight edges. Make sure the assembly is square. Um, I don't know what else to tell you here, guys. Get your axles glued into place and let it dry up and then we can move on to the next step. Well, I was a little shy on 3 16 dowel, so I used a large 3 16 drill bit to hold this together while I was gluing it and everything is dry and set up and we're ready to move on. So we have our drive shaft connectors, both of them, and 
this drive shaft. Now this is a little strange. In case you're wondering where to get the measurements of this, you won't see it on the plans other than right here. Uh, quarter inch dowel, three inches long. I wanted it to match, so I just turned one out of a scrap of walnut. Now you want to get this centered here and it gets installed with this drive shaft actually above this axle right here. So in order to get it centered on our assembly, I'm going to place an 11 16th setup block up against our spring assembly here. And that will allow us to glue this centered. So just a little dab of glue on there. And it will actually sit just a little proud, just a little bit, of our differential top and bottoms. So we'll get both sides glued in and that will be this piece complete. Well, whenever you're working on one of these models, there's never wrong with changing something the way that you want. And honestly, guys, I don't like the amount of glue I was able to get onto the uh, side spring assemblies on, uh, under the axles. I really wanted more strength to this, so no problem. I drilled some 332nd inch holes right down through the entire assembly. I did a stopped hole into our springs, and I've just glued in some 332nd inch dowels. Once they're dried up, I'll cut them flush, sand them. They're underneath the vehicle, so they'd never be seen. And even if they are seen, they're just a lighter colored dowel accent. Look like it belongs there. And you know what? No one's going to know the difference other than, well, you and me. Now, this rear dually axle assembly should fit a little loose on the back of your frame. It should pivot, so you may have to sand it just a little bit. You shouldn't need to take too much off, just enough to make it run smoothly on the back of your frame. And when you're done, you can sit your spring assembly in place, making sure that your differential cover is at the back of the vehicle. And we just have a piece of 3 16 dowel. We're just gonna feed it through here, just like this. And a couple of axle caps that we have made um, in the same fashion as how we made our axle pegs. We just didn't glue them to a peg. And we're gonna glue these in place and that will finish up our rear spring assembly. Now I know that there are more parts to add to this, but I'm kind of done with this whole thing for now. So I'm going to come back to those after. And once again, we are out of time for this week's show. This build is really coming along, but it's still a very slow process. And as I've said many times before, you really need to pack your patience if you want to make one of these or any of the Toys and Joys patterns for that matter. They are a, a process in themselves. And sometimes half of the fun is just trying to figure out how to make a piece. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. We have an amazing audience base here on the show, and I'm hoping that you're going to consider becoming a part of it. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in this week. I hope you've enjoyed the content up until now. I hope that you're giving this a try at home for yourself with your own set of plans and building this along with me. But more importantly, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.